everybody. It's Beth Maitland. We're hard at work in the workshop at Drama Queen Bee Quilt Studios. We're going to learn some edge-to-edge -edge designs today. I'm working on five batik quilts for my nieces and nephews for Christmas, and um, we are on December 2nd, so the crunch has begun. I've finished the tops, and I'm ready to do the edge-to-edge -edge quilting, and I thought you might enjoy seeing how the motion happens. So here we are at the lower border of this piece and we start by throwing out a teardrop shaped paisley and then we echo it one time. And now we're going to start by putting little loops all the way around it with the small side of the loop pointing away from the center paisley. And when we get all the way around it, we're gonna put a, a cloud-like uh, cover over each little loop. It could be, you could think of it as a flower petal. Um, I've heard it described more as like a cloud over each of these little loops, hence the name. Um, I, I call it the paisley, the loopy clam. So this is the edge to edge loopy clam design. And as you see, we just nestle these paisleys in the direction that we're working across the quilt. So I'm working from left to right, which is how my particular quilter is the most happy in terms of tension. So we just nest these um, oyster paisley clam cloud loopy shapes in, in the direction from left to right by leaning everything that way and by starting everything to the direction we're going especially when we get down to the loops. As you can see down here at the very base of the teardrop, you can go back and forth and kind of cross over the threads. But in order to keep the design from crossing over, we need to start the loops in the direction we're going. So we're going left to right, we want to move to the right, so we're going to start these little loops on the right hand side of the paisley so that see as we come around, we're ending at the right side of the design to move to the right, which is the direction we're quilting. When we go back in the other direction, we're just going to switch the angle of all of this and the side of the design that we work on and that we finish on so that we can move from right to left going back across the quilt in the other direction. And we'll show you that in just a second, but I think you can get the idea. We try to keep an even spacing of the lines of stitching so that everything um, kind of covers the quilt in an even manner. and. I go in and I touch these little corners and sides up just from, from stitching in the ditch along the edge. So here's a good view of our little design. Um, over the, I've, I've finished all of the workspace, the whole uh, work area. And you can see the beautiful, loopy, uh, sort of feminine, whimsical texture and feel of this design. Great for this little girl's batik quilt great for my little niece. She's just going to love it. And when you wash it, it's going to crunch up and be even more fluffy and loopy. And this is Beth Maitland signing off as the holiday season crunch begins. Everybody have a great holiday and thank you for tuning in to my tutorial videos at Drama Queen Bee Quilts.